Good evening guys, this is Leppanen coming to you with another video. This video is going to be entirely about how the heck you can figure out like what kind of clan you're in. So this is going to be over and diagnosing your clan choice. Okay, so I had this one person and everything, he was sending me some messages earlier and everything, and I'm going to give him a little shout out and everything because, I mean, it's, you know, all spare and uh -huh, the guy's name is Spares. But anyways, this guy was asking me about, like, how much do I spend on the game? Like, you know, whether or not this has gone, like, you know, up or down or whatever and everything. And I went through it and I was, at, uh, like, answering his questions and he was just like, you know, well, what led to the difference in between, like, how much you were spending before versus how much you're spending now? And, I mean, I could go through and, you know, tell people, like, hey, I'm not playing the events as much as I was. I'm not trying to climb as fast as I was. And for those of you that are trying to figure out, like, you know, okay, what does this matter? It also will dictate how fast you grow in this game and, like, what kind of player you are. So if you're trying to grow fast, which a lot of you that are watching these videos are like, hey, I really want to grow fast in the game. I want to be able to, like, accelerate, kind of like what you've done and all. And, I mean, this guy that I was talking to, or I'm assuming it's a guy, might not be, um, they were saying how they've only been playing the game for, like, not even two months now, and they're already G6. And I'm just like, well, shoot, that's great, you know? And But then you got to think back to, like, okay, when I was, like, a G6, how much money was I spending per month? How much money did I spend per month, you know, depending upon, like, you know, what clan I was in? Or whether or not the kingdom was about to open up. Or whether or not there was a Beowulf challenge that was going on. And all this other kind of stuff. And part of the reason why I just don't spend very much anymore. Is because of the fact that. If you're trying to accelerate super fast. You're going to have to pour more money into it. But it's also to where if you're in the right clan. You don't really need to. So we're going to take a look at. How you could diagnose what kind of clan you're in. And that'll kind of dictate for some of you, like, hey, do I need to be in this exact same clan that I am in right now? Like, should I move on from them or whatever? So many times in this game, you'll see people that they will stay in a clan for, like, ever. And it's kind of like staying in a bad relationship and everything. I'm sorry, but you just shouldn't do it. Like... Staying in a clan the whole entire time is great for loyalty purposes, but the clan is going to, you know, be like, it's kind of like a human being when they're growing up and everything. You're a newborn baby and then you start to develop and you get bigger and bigger and you're, you know, growing really fast and all this other kind of stuff. And then you get to like your 20s and 30s and 40s and you're kind of just chill and, you know, doing all this wild and crazy and then you get to like 50 and 60 to where you're just like, I want to slow down. I just don't want to be going nearly as fast. And then you get to your older years and you're just like, hey, give me an excuse in order to no longer play this game again and I'll just stop playing. So in this game, it's the exact same thing with players, you know, in every single clan. Some clans are good, some clans are bad. So there's this button on the computer if you're playing it this way. If you're playing it on your phone, then it's still to where, like, you'll just have to hit, um, in the bottom right-hand corner of your phone, there's this, basically, like, this, uh, one button, and then you click on that, and it'll come up with a menu of all these different little icons and everything, and one of the icons is basically the rankings. So, you can look at the rankings in order to basically determine, like, how good is a clan? Now... The way that a lot of people like look at it, they're like, oh, well, the people with the biggest might, they're the best clans and everything. Uh, no, it's not that way at all. Like clans that are good. Yeah, a lot of times, like if their might is really well, uh, like is really good, then, you know, yeah, they're a good clan. Like, I mean, you can look in this, uh, like at this graphic right here. FOC Sword in Kingdom 100 is an absolute beast and everything. They have g9 s9 you know like uh, all these players and everything they're just like by far and away blowing it out of the water so yes in kingdom 100 sword is the best and bastards are the second best and then you go down the line and you go like down from one to the other 
And if you're looking at, like, on a global scale, you know, yes, GOD and OST basically set the standard. I mean, you can look at the might of it and be like, you know, holy crap, like, look at their numbers. But it's also to where, like, you know, look at their wealth. Like, GOD is going through and having huge wealth. I mean, if you look at all their different clans and everything like that for G.O.D. and O.S.T. and everything, I mean, like, look at this clan wealth and everything. I mean, I know that this is not like a perfect measurement of it and everything and that you're just like, OK, well, how can sorry, how can, you know, G.O.D. have five members in it and have such good wealth and everything? This is also to where it includes past, you know, things that have been done or whatever. So a lot of times what these bigger clans get to do is they'll go through and take all their members from one part of their family and move them over to the other part of their family. And they're just basically like switching them on around because of the ancients and the prizes and all that kind of stuff. But that's a completely different story. But usually when you're looking at like in a kingdom or, you know, across the globe, as far as what is the best indicator of, you know, a clan, you got to look at their wealth. So I'm going to go through and give you like some basic like tutelage as far as like why this matters and everything. Because like if you look at individuals in a kingdom and everything, you can kind of notice a, you know, a trend on it. If you're like, okay, well, who is the, I guess the game is messing up. Oh, there it is. If you look at like, you know, oh, the might and everything. And then you look at what clan they're in and all like, you know, for Kingdom 100, it's like sword, 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 sword. And they have the highest might or, or and they have the highest might. And so they also probably are in the exact same clan together. And those players are going through and pulling in massive amounts of chess. So if you look at, let's say the clan information or whatever. So we're just looking at bastards and everything because of the fact that, you know, that's the clan that I'm in and everything. If you look at the, ch uh, like the different listings and everything, there is a person that is dedicated to the amount of chess that each clan member is bringing in per two week cycle. Now for my, uh, my clan, it's actually a 12 week cycle. It's from the time where COT ends to the time to where the COT ends on the next one. That's the period. And so in between those 12 days or whatever, they have it to where they're counting not just how many chests you get, but also the quality of them. So in a good clan and everything, they have people that are trying to recruit from you know other areas. We have people that are trying to settle disputes. We have people that are going through and like, you know, whether or not it's they're organizing CP runs or they're doing like different kinds of programs and all this other kind of stuff. I mean, look at this list. This is a massive list where we have like, you know, eight, nine people that are basically helping to manage this one clan of a hundred members and they all have their different tasks or whatever. This is the way that a really well run clan does it. And I know fully darn well that G-O-D, O-S-T, you know, I-Y-2, like, M-I, whatever. I can't remember all the names of the best clans in the world and everything. But they emulate each other. They have it to where they copy each other in a lot of different ways. Like, G-O-D and O-S-T are basically the standard. Like, they have the highest players. They build an entire kingdom of just their family of players and everything. And they have it to where they're constantly going through and helping each other. It's an ideal situation. Now, if you were, went to go through and compare this to different kingdoms. So here's one of the things that, you know, we'll take a look at because I want you all to basically see that there's a way that you could tell whether or not you're in a good clan or a bad clan, just by looking at the outside of it. Like, if we're looking from a landscape view, I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Notice that all of our buildings are pretty close together. They're not spread out all over the darn place and everything, you know, all across the darn map. And then you go through and you start looking at other ones. I can look at this clan right here. Now, granted, there's not many people inside of this clan or whatever, and it might be defunct to where it's almost like fading... And all this other kind of stuff. 
And you know that there's nothing really going on in this clan. This is a failing clan. This clan is basically dying. And you could go through and you can like, you know, see this in different parts of the map and everything. Where, okay, this is a clan. They're all spread out into different areas and everything. They don't have a good location or whatever to where if you're at a high, high level clan, they usually want to take care of this 90% silver, you know, production level. Your highest level players and everything always need silver. So they're going to be going through and either doing it on silver or they're going to go through and basically aim for it on the farming land at a 90%. This one's 80, so, you know, maybe they didn't go there. This one's 90, that'd be a good idea. But when you're looking at this clan, they're not all hovered around these 90% tiles and everything. They're in different areas. Not a very good clan. At least they didn't get good space and everything. And if you can't have a good space and everything, you're probably not going to be doing it very well. But, like, look at these. I mean, you could just look around this kingdom and just be like, you know, hey, half the people don't have their bubble up. Not a good clan. When you're looking at, like, you know, okay, they're all spread out all over the place. Not a good clan. It just is indicative as far as, like, or an indicator of hey, this is well run or this is not well run. I wouldn't even have to go through and check the wealth on this clan in order, in order to know that they are not that great. I mean, you can look at them and be like, okay, let's you know see whether or not I even want to go to these guys, like FOC Ghost Riders and everything. Okay, so we're looking at, okay, they have a leader. They, have a, they do recruit, which is good. Um, they do have a, di a diplomat that basically handles a lot of different disputes and chats and everything else like that gets along with other people They have different, you know events and who exactly is in charge of it. That's not bad I mean it could be better it could be worse, but this is a halfway decently run clan You need to have it to where there is different people for each individual task to where it's a like, okay, this person's running this, this person's running that. And so you, if you're like a member of that clan, you know exactly who to go for. If you're somebody that was looking into going into this clan, you're like, okay, I need a contact for membership, um, Echo, you know, and that's going to be the person that I basically need to contact in order to basically get into it. Okay, cool. Decently run clan. You can also look up, you know, okay, I also need to take a look at their wealth and everything. That number is pretty good. They have a decent might and everything. I can look at their members and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so they have some people in their leadership, in their superior part, that only have the basic level hero. All right, so this might be their alts. So Faber, Fenelis, you know, Afrin or whatever, that's probably alt. Like to where it's not their main profile or whatever. But it kind of tells you like, you know, hey, maybe they're not super active. Maybe. They only have a few officers. They don't have a lot of veterans. They probably have a lot of soldiers. If you go down. Eh, eh, never mind. They have a bunch of veterans, but not that high level so if you're looking at like you know whether or not you want to join a clan like that and everything you should basically have it to where you always keep your options open it's like let's say for instance that you're looking for a job you don't want to be without a clan when you're looking for a job you want to be in a clan when you're looking for a, uh or in a job when you're looking for a job if you're looking for a clan you basically want to be in a clan when you're going through and deciding like Hey, I'm already in one right now. Let's say that I was decided to go on over to another one. Like, okay, I'm going to look in. This is, for instance, and everything that grants kind of a true story. I'm in FOC Bastards. We're the second best in the kingdom and everything. But look at this difference in the wealth. Also, we know that their might is a whole heck of a lot better. And let's say that I'm, a, you know, greedy butthead and everything that I really want to go through and accelerate and get fast, uh, get bigger, faster and everything. Then I would go through and basically, you know, try and reach on out to FOC Sword. Okay, let's look at their members or their information. Okay, for membership, I need to talk to Boscone or British Psycho. Then you look at their members, look on... Okay, so Bosco is the leader. And British Psycho... 
I guess British Psycho left? Maybe? Who knows? Not seeing them. Oh, they probably need to update their page. So then I would just reach out to Boscone and be like, you know, hey, do you think I could possibly go on over to your clan? This is my information, blah, blah, blah. Reach on out to them that way. Have it to where they basically, like, you know, are just like... Because a lot of the really good clans, they're not taking you immediately. They're not just going to be like, oh, yeah, come on over and everything. You know, we always have openings. Like, m mostly of the time, whenever you're a pretty darn good clan, you're full. You have 100 out of 100 or 70 out of 70 or, you know, whatever the heck the number is. So they're not going to be super available. Now, here's another thing that you also got to consider and everything. The better clans are usually in the more veteran kingdoms. Okay, so let me explain to you why that matters and everything. So if we were to look on a global map, right? And I know for those of you that have seen some of my videos and everything, you're just like, okay, I got an idea on this. Like, a veteran kingdom is anything at this point in the game from more along the lines of like a 116 on up. I mean, granted, there are other kingdoms that are open and everything when you're talking about like, you know, 118, 119, 120. I think it's to where like the last one that opened up is somewhere in this area. I don't know. I don't keep track of it because I don't care anymore. But when you're looking at like Okay, then what's the difference in between a veteran kingdom and a kingdom that is more new and everything else? So let me tell you a, you know, hilarious story and everything. Because I used to be in Kingdom 113. And when I was in Kingdom 113, there was drama, drama, drama. And now granted, it's not to where, oh, this is only relegated to 113. This is every single kingdom, whenever they have it, to where they are more new or just opened up or whatever. And when you look at that kingdom and everything, like we have it to where SAS is now has the king or whatever, and you look around and everything, I mean, granted, like, this is a kingdom that has been open for a while, and this is about as close as they get to kind of being grouped together. Not exactly like, you know... If you have a bunch of people that still don't even have a city skin, they're probably not that far into the game. And if you're looking at it to where, like, I mean, unbubbled, 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 unbubbled. I mean, you know, yeah, I can understand if it's COT going on, Clash of Thrones. But yeah, no. I mean, you're just looking around this entire map and you're just like... Okay, we have a lot of people that do not have a clan. Don't understand why that is. I mean, this is still like not exactly any of this kingdom says, you know, hey, I'm really grown the heck up or whatever. Now, here's one of the problems that we had when the kingdom was going through all of its turmoil and everything else. There was bitter arguments over stupid stuff. Like, I went and had lunch with this one guy that, you know, I'll, I'll say his, uh, you know, gamer name. It was Moist Donut. He was a really nice guy and everything. And we went on out and we had dinner and everything. And he was talking about all the different, you know, stuff that was going on. And, like, the bitter arguments over, like, this clan over here hates this clan over here. And they're going through and they're spying on each other and they're sending members from one clan to another in order to have it to where like they can find out information about when they're going to do their ancient summons or when they're going to do cp runs or when they're going or who they're going to attack and what they're going to attack and everything else like that and if you're in one of those kingdoms to where you are hearing these stories and everything then you're like oh my gosh my clan and my kingdom you know i don't want to be in this so, like, you might be in a decent clan to where, like, this is not a, you know, this is, like, an okay clan at best. You can tell by the amount of bubbles that are up and kind of the organization of everything. Like, sorry, but players that are putting their cities over here in these little, you know, hilly areas, probably not a high-level player. Because they're either, you're looking for that 90% sand area, which that one's 60 
still 60 40 percent and you know some of these players are probably putting their cities on things that aren't 90 percent and then they're not even going into the grass areas all that much to where these guys are in the freaking you know trees and lumber and everything should be going like over here 90 percent food duh so with this and everything like you can take a look at you know hey this is a better setup for a clan. This is a worse setup for a clan. This basically, you know, shows me what they're what they're like. Don't go into a clan and immediately think that everything is going to be perfect. You need to go through and vet them before time. Like, take a look at them. Take a look at the setup of their clan. Talk to some of their members. See if they really like it. Like, it's kind of like a job interview, but you're interviewing the employer. You want to see like whether or not this is the right fit for you and everything. Like, okay, this one halfway decent, you know, they're kind of clumped together and everything, you know, whatever. But the other thing about it is, are you even in the right kingdom? Because like I was saying, if you're hearing all this drama about like, oh, this person's spying on them and there's clan wars all the time and everything else like that. Like I had one of my profiles on down here in kingdom 134 all right so it was where i just opened up and everything and i had just gotten into the game on my third account and it put me in kingdom 134 and originally i didn't know that hey i could just move it straight the heck out i thought hey it's a closed kingdom you cannot move something out of it well it's closed to go into it but it's not closed to go out of it so I was talking to this one person that I was kind of allied up with, you know, we were getting along and everything, just developing a friendship. And she was like, hey, um, like, are you still, you know, dealing with this war or whatever? I'm like, what war? I left. And she's like, oh, well, there's this big, huge clan wars that are going on in Kingdom 134 right now to where... Like, you know, this clan is fighting this clan and this clan is fighting that clan and is basically just destroying everything. They're attacking clan forts and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm just like, dear gosh. Like, here's a good, uh, good look at one, th uh, like, uh, one of the clans in 134. Yes, they're compacted together. Are they probably into... Oh, I can't even, like, take a look. Yeah, because of the fact it's still a closed kingdom. I can't even see whether or not they're on the right, you know, tiles or whatever. But they're kind of neatly compacted and everything. But look at the amount of people that do not have bubbles. This is just welcoming, like, hey, come on over and beat the crap out of me type of thing. Like, not a good idea. But when you're looking at this and everything, you're thinking, like, okay, am I in the right kingdom? Am I in the right clan? Like, this is fit me and everything. You know, and just looking around, this is a very, very, you know, beginning level type of, you know, kingdom. So if you like all the drama and everything and all that kind of stuff, then yes, be in one of the high number, you know, kingdoms. Like go to 120, go to 128 or whatever. If you're already there, then great. But it's also to when all those open up and everything, there's nothing stopping one of the clans from a veteran kingdom from coming on in and basically taking on over you. So the reason why I'm saying this, and I'm going to circle on back to what exactly that person was saying, fairs. For fairs, it was to where he was asking about the spending. Now, here's the reason why I know that I'm in a good clan, good situation right now. And it's not to crap one you know, Kingdom 113 or anybody else or whatever, because they do what they do. I mean, it's the best of what they got. And you can't blame somebody that's never been into a veteran kingdom and everything for not knowing, hey, this is a good way to go. And so what happened with my spending was when I was in, like, let's go back to my city real quick. If you look at the organization of this, right, they're all together. It's not just, hey, we're putting our cities beside each other. They're all bubbled. The only people that are not bubbled are the people that are basically going through and fulfilling some type of, you know, function in the, uh, in the clan. Like this guy right here is basically the city that people send their, you know, guys to. And then their guys go through and fight other players out of that city. 
said this way it doesn't have to worry about a bubble because there's nothing in that city. There's no silver. There's no building resources. There's no nothing. People just use this as a shell in order to go through and attack from in order to go to other areas. So they reinforce the city. The person that's there basically sends their army, attaches them to it, and sends someone out and they go attack somebody from the exact same family of clans and they go through and help each other out. Like, there is a reason why. And I didn't like this originally when I was in 113, but I also see the merit behind it. There is a reason why, if you look at Kingdom 100, it's FOC, 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 FOC. And, like, the only uh, the only clans that are even close, like BNF, I talked to their leader, and a lot of the people wanted to jump ship and move on over to FOC because they wanted to go to a higher level clan. And I don't blame them. It's just like, you know, hey, if you want to go to a higher level clan, then go to a higher level clan. I mean, shoot, I don't like I did it. But you can also look at other kingdoms and everything. Like, let's go through and look at like I know OST probably hates this, but GOD is right beside me and everything. So I might as well go through and talk about them. So G.O.D., if you look at around their entire map and everything, they basically have this huge network of basically clans. So they have like G.O.D. Shield. Now let's go to a different part of the map. Oh, this is a different uh, clan. Let's see where there's another G.O.D. Not that. There's no way G.O.D. would ever do something like that. I don't know if I can look it up by different uh, kingdoms or whatever, but that would be nice. Let's see what this one is. Is this another G.O.D.? Yep, another G.O.D. Guardians of Death. So G.O.D., kind of like in uh, Kingdom 100, has a huge family of clans. And they probably have their top tier ones. And then they go through and they bump down from, you know, oh, these are like, here's the best analogy for it. If anybody has ever watched baseball and you look at like, you know, oh, they have the major league teams and then they have the triple A and the double A and the single A. If you're a low level player like a G4 and everything, then you're only going into a single A type of level for GOD. You're going to go into one of the beginner ones. And they do have their different tiers in their family that they basically go through and help people like all along the way. They share resources. And that's what makes a good clan a good clan. You have a whole bunch of clans as a network. You help each other out. And then you basically go through and help the players uh, like, you know, accelerate or find their happy place in the game. And then that's where they're basically going to be at. So when you're looking at good clans and how exactly it affects your money and everything, like when I went to my city or my new clan and everything, you know that everybody is helping each other out because they're all grouped together. They all have their bubble on, so they're definitely helping each other. And then they also have it to where, like, if you look at the amount of chess... So every single time that I open up my chest, and it's only been, I mean, you can look at the timer. If it has 19 hours and 10 minutes left, that means that it, this chest has been sitting there for 51 minutes now. So 19 hours and 9 minutes. 51 minutes since this chest was originally gotten. And I'm at 198 chests in the course of 51 minutes from my clan. That is amazing. Like, if you do the math behind that and start to figure it on out and everything, one or basically 200 in the course of less than an hour, you're figuring 4,800 chests in a day. Now, granted, it doesn't hold true the entire part of the day. It's not to where they always are hitting this constantly. But also, look at the color of those. They have orange. They have very occasionally like a purple or a green, but then we got red, 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 red. Orange, purple, a little bit of blue. So people are like fishing on different levels. But usually whenever I open this, it's nothing but red and orange. Sometimes the yellow and everything, but this is absolutely amazing. And so like when you look at what exactly are you getting, look at the bottom of the screen. 
a speed up one day, 125 in you know stone, eight hours, 250,000 is silver. Like I'm getting all these different prizes, and whenever I'm getting these, it's like why should I have to spend money on speed ups? Like now I never spend money on speed ups. I also don't have to worry about gold. I get about four to five million in gold per week. And granted, I spend about three, three and a half million in gold per week on whether or not it's reviving soldiers or reviving, uh, not reviving soldiers, reviving mercs, reviving my monsters, going through and putting up a shield of peace, having it to where I pay for blueprints in order to get a level 44 building up to a 45 level building. It's just like 18,000 blueprints gets really super expensive after a while but like you're looking at these different prizes and everything and it's just like okay i don't want to spend money on none of that like if you ever are spending money on resources like your speed ups that means that you're probably in a not that good of a clan if you're i'm going to spend money on silver you're probably in not that good of a clan like i haven't even been in this clan like forever and i already have fat stack amount of like you know silver and granted compared to like space or any of the other top 100 players this is pittance compared to what they have <laughs> but then when you look at all these different things and everything i'm getting these for free from my clan members it just shows you as far as like when you're getting stuff like this at such a fast rate like this right here 221 of the city teleporters from one area to the next. I had bought 50 when I first got into this kingdom because I'm like, hey, I got to basically be prepared to play with the big boys. Anytime my shield is down or whatever, I have to be able to jump here, here, here. I've made up 171 of these in the course of the two months that I've been in this clan. I've gotten 171 for free. Never spent a dime on it. And then you look at all the other crap that I've gotten and everything like that. This is almost all from the clan and what exactly they give me and everything. Now, granted, my tar is pretty darn low right now because I have it all accessed up here. But then look at the amount of tar that I'm getting. 77 million, 18 million, you know, like less than a million because I usually use this first in order to get my points for my chest. If you're having it to where you're trying to decide like whether or not you're in the right clan, look at your resources and what exactly you're getting. Now, granted, if you're a G6 and you're in with a bunch of G5s, G7s, and G6s and everything in your clan, then you're hoping that these people are active players to where they're actually trying to get somewhere. Like the clan that I have for my third account right now. And I'm still trying to go through and develop it in, into a nice silver altar or whatever. The members of this clan are not exactly huge players. You know, their wealth is pretty darn good and everything. But it's because of the fact that on the information page and everything, one of the requirements is 15 chests per day of a level 15 or above. The way that people are incentivized in my clan in bastards in order to go through and actually like keep up is the requirements are high. If you have it to where like a G8 or a G9 is in this clan and everything, and like some people have been like, oh man, I really want to get into your clan, like, you know, uh, fairs or whatever. And I don't blame them. I would want to get into it if I was a G6 also because the amount of prizes per week, holy crap. But it's also where chess requirement is an 8,000 point minimum. That means that they have high standards. And then what they do is, is that they take the amount of points that you get in comparison to the rest of the clan members. And they take also your placement in the amount of chess that you get. And they kind of balance out your rank as far as, oh, I rank this on ancients and I rank this on my chess. And they automatically cut down the bottom three people in the clan every single 12 days. Doesn't matter if you had an off week or anything else like that. Like, you know, if you're on vacation and everything, they give you a pass because of the fact that you're on vacation. 
but you better not be on vacation all the dang time because they're just going to be like, no, you're not worth it. Bye. And they'll go through and they'll cut you. You have to be willing as a leader. Let's say that you're a leader of a clan, right? And most of the people that watch these videos and everything, you're probably fast growers. So you will probably end up being a leader of a clan at some point. If you're trying to decide when you're looking at your members, like, okay, who do I keep? Who do I get rid of? And everything else like that. Look based upon effort. I mean, granted, you also got to decide, like, you know, what is the goal of the clan? Like, are we going to try and keep up with the highest level of players? Are we going to go through and try and grow? Are we going through and just a social clan and everything else? Nothing wrong with that. But then you have to be willing to go through and get rid of people if they're not doing what they need to do. Like, you know, for me and my position and everything is to where I'm pretty darn well off in my clan. But I still need to make sure that I hit a good amount of chests. I hit a good amount of ancient points and everything. So when you're looking at your clan, right? I'm just going to show you a little bit more and then this is going to be the end of the video. Look at the, uh, uh, like the way that the clan is set up, right? Is this a good or bad level clan? You know the answer. Not good. Look at this one. Is this a good or bad or level clan? Now granted, I already probably know who this is. It's Sword. They're the best in the entire kingdom. Look at their, you know, they're grouped together. Almost everybody is bubbled. The only people that are not bubbled are probably the cities that have it to where like they are used as basically like, hey, come here and then we're going to send you on out in order to go through and attack on a CP run or whatever. But this is a very well organized group together type of thing. And if you look at their mandates, let's look at the clan real quick. Uh, minimum admission requirements, guardsman level nine, specialist level nine, and along with, you know, blah, 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 as far as ancients. Now, they don't have their points up here, but you know dang well that they have a point minimum. They probably have other different parts about it that they mandate. So when you're trying to think about like, hey, How's my spending looking? Am I going to be able to keep up with my spending? Because the biggest thing about this game is like, you know, enjoying the game. But in order to enjoyment, you probably need to have it to where you feel some set of accomplishment over what it is that you're doing in the game. You probably want to make sure that you're actually growing at a decent pace to where you feel that accomplishment and everything. But your spending is going to dictate that. Now, if it's to where like, hey, what if I'm trying to lower my spending? Like right now, I have it to where I'm trying to drastically lower my spending. So I'm trying to keep it to where it's under, you know, horrible to say $300 a month. And I could probably get it down to free if I really wanted to and still stay in my clan. But it's to where you have to basically ask yourself, like, are you in the right clan? Is this clan going to challenge you? It is... Like, and the last bit of advice that I have for all of you, if you're looking at the members of the clan, right? Let's say that you know what your might is. Like, you know, okay, this person has 641 million. They're higher than almost everybody that's watching these videos. Don't be the smallest person in the clan. You never want to do that. Because then you're basically going into a clan and you're going to be the le oh, the weak little one that's probably going to get their head whacked off when they're trying to go through and trim the fat. When they're trying to get rid of the little people that don't really contribute very much. But then again, if you're in a clan and you're the biggest person in there, you're like the big, you know, Willie slinging and everything like, oh my gosh, you know, type of thing. It's one thing if you're huge and you're barely above the next level player. I mean, granted, there's a difference in here and everything, but it's not that horrible. But if you look at it and there's like a drastic difference in between like the highest level player, like let's say that, you know, we had a 1.2 million and then the next highest person was like 600 million where you're double your next person down. You're probably in like the wrong clan. That upper person is in the wrong clan. You want to have it to where like you're joining a clan and yeah, 
for the most part, I would highly advise anybody that's joining a clan to be in the lower third, the lower half of the thing. Because you want to have it to where if you're trying to gain in this uh, game, you're trying to go into it with a clan that is above you that can teach you things. That's above you and they have the resources. So this way, when you're going through and you're getting resources and everything, you know, they're actually like, you know, hey, I'm grateful for this and everything. And let me go through and help you out, too, because they know that a better clan is better looking for them. So you want to have it to where you're not the biggest fish in the sea, but you're also not the smallest. So try and pick something to where if you're joining a new clan, you're going to be in the lower third or have it to where like. If you're comfortable with being in that upper tier and everything, then why not go through and like make it to where you get to know the people, maybe get into a leadership position, stuff like that. So you're spending in this game and you're like, it's completely dictated around your clan. If you're in a clan and you're having to buy speed ups, you're going to be spending a lot of money. Like I don't ever look at the mass speed ups I have anymore, to be honest with you. Like, if I have 31,000 of the eight-hour ones and everything, and 10,000 of the one days, like, I never, ever care about the amount of speed-ups I have. Just sad but true. So, if you're looking at, hey, what do I got? What do I need and everything? Whether or not this is a good clan for me and everything, what are they giving you? If you're having it to where you're constantly having to buy crap, the only thing you should ever have to spend uh, money on in this game is mercenaries mercs if you're having to spend money on regular resources you're in the wrong clan if you have it to where you don't have much resources and you don't care and everything like that then yeah you're probably in the right clan or maybe you should be in a lower tier one to where you're like one of the biggest people in there and it's a bunch of newbies because they're not going to care as to whether or not you're contributing all that much it's they're just going to have the pleasure of basically being around you so look at your spending, look at what exactly the clan has, what their leadership is, whether or not they're very professional in their page. Do they have a good amount of different, you know, people assigned to like leadership roles? What do they do as a part of that? Are they mentoring? Are they helping you out? Like if nobody's answering your questions, then that is a big, huge red flag. I'm in the wrong clan. If you're trying to grow in this game and nobody answers your questions and you have to rely completely upon my videos for this, you're definitely in the wrong clan. Find someone that's better, hold them to a higher standard and everything, and be willing to have it to where, yeah, if you're jumping ship and everything else like that, they're going to get annoyed to you or annoyed by you, but they'll understand it if you go through and say, sorry guys, I got a really great offer from somebody else and I just had to take it. They'll be okay with it. If you say it graciously, if you're like, y'all suck, then they're going to be like, you know what? We're going to go through and attack your city constantly. Hope you have a bubble. All right, guys. So that pretty much covers, you know, the whole entire concept of clan choice versus spending and everything else like that. How to lower it, what this would be like, you know, what kind of things are you expecting, you know, don't just look at what exactly they're giving you in chess. Also think about, am I in the right freaking kingdom? So it is important in order to go through and be like, hey, I like the setup. I like what they have to say on their page. It kind of speaks to me. They have expectations that are good. And have it to where you have standards and everything. And if you get into a, if you're already in a clan and you want to improve them and everything, show them, you know, what exactly you're talking about. Like, hey guys, we need to go through and develop a good leadership group and everything that takes care of all these different issues to where we do have standards per week as to the mad chess that they're doing. Why not we're talking about my highest, you know, like main clan or whether or not we're talking about a lower clan. There still should be standards. If there isn't, then you're in a wrong clan. Because people don't just do something for nothing. Sad to say it, if I had it to where I was still teaching, you know, my high school students, and I told them, eh, turn in your homework whenever, or, you know, there's an assignment. If you do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. You know every single damn student ain't going to do it. 
or at least, you know, 90% of them won't. So have standards. People will go through and match you. That is all I have to basically say about the whole entire, like, clan versus spending versus, you know, how to lower it, what to look for, all the sort of kind of stuff. So diagnosing your clan is very, very super important. With that being said, if you learned something out of this video, please hit the like button. If you did not, I apologize. I will hopefully do better on the next one. Uh, if you want to subscribe, you can. If you want to reach on out to me and everything like that, like this person did, Ferris or whatever, then go through and just send me a direct message in the game. I read those so much more often than the other ones. I'm sorry. If you comment on the video and everything online and I don't get back to you, I am sorry, guys. I just suck at these. But, yeah. Go through and contact me directly. Uh, if you want to know where exactly my city is, let me pull it up for you. <laughs> Lefinan, L-E-F-I-N-A-N. Here's the coordinates and everything. I absolutely love it when people go through and reach out to me and everything. And please, at least when you reach on out to me, don't crap all over my ideas or whatever. You're the sucker that watched me. So, all right, guys. You guys have a good day. And I will talk to you all later and with another video very, very soon. Y'all have a good night. Bye.